In this video, you'll learn about the global axis and the local axis in Start Pro. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic. Hello and welcome everyone. If you're new to this channel, do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Also, if you're not already a member of our private Facebook group, I'm sharing a link in the description. Go ahead and join that group. Finally, by the end of this video, if you learn something out of it, and if you like this video, do not forget to hit that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, do share this video and the channel in general with your friends to help support this channel and help us grow. With that said, let's get going. Now, the primary difference between the global and the local axis boils down to one simple thing. That is, the global axis is going to be constant for your structure. It will not depend upon any member orientation. However, when it comes to local axis, the local axis will be variable and it will be variable across the members. Every member will have its own local axis and it will depend upon how the member is oriented. With that said, global axis is going to be constant and we will not be worrying about that. However, when it comes to local axis, there are a few things which you must understand. The first thing and the most important thing is whenever you're wanting to find the local axis of a member, just remember the left hand rule with your index finger pointing towards the X direction, the middle finger pointing towards the Z direction and the thumb pointing towards the Y direction. Whenever in doubt, pull out your left hand and you'll be able to assess the local axis of any member. And I'll show you exactly how to do it. So if you come across a case where the X is slightly oriented in a different direction, you can just move your hand a little bit and you can work with this left hand rule very easily. On the left bottom, you can see the global axis is going to be constant. This is not changing. However, the local axis is going to change depending upon your member orientation. All in all, local axis is going to be variable and it will depend upon the member orientation. So how do we find what local axis does a member have? A local axis, of course, is broken down into three parts. The first part is the X axis. When it comes to the local x-axis, this x-axis is always going to be the longitudinal axis. What I mean by that, if you have a member with a starting and an ending, so on the left side is the starting of the member, on the right side is the end of the member, the axis along the length is going to be your x-axis or the local x-axis to be very precise. So every member, depending upon the orientation, will have a different x-axis but that X axis will always be the longitudinal axis. So whenever you see a member, you will be sure where to point your index finger. It will be along the length of that member. Moving on to the Y and the Z axis. Now here, no one rule is applicable. However, there are a few tips I can give you to find the Y axis and the Z axis, which is the normal case scenario in most of the structures which you'll build. So when it comes to Z axis, every vertical member that is, a member whose longitudinal axis will be along the Y axis. So on the left side, you can see the member, the X axis of which is along the global Y axis. In such cases or in such members, the local Z axis will be the global X axis. So both of those would be parallel. Let's see that graphically. So if you have a member, something like this, you can easily assess that the local Z axis will be parallel to the global Z axis. So every member which is vertical, the Z axis along the local axis and the global axis will be along the same direction. Again, when in doubt, use the left hand rule. Moving on to the Y axis. Now the cases are a bit different here. For every horizontal member, that is a member which is along the global X Z plane. So any member which will be placed in the plane of X Z, the local Y axis and the global Y axis will be parallel or will be in the same direction. What I mean by this is, for example, if you have this member, which is along this global X, Z axis, and you can change the orientation, but it remains in the plane or remains horizontal. In such a case, the local Y axis is parallel to the global Y axis. Now these X and Z may change depending upon the orientation of the member, but this Y will remain the same. Again, when in doubt, use the left hand rule. So all in all, one thing remains constant, that is the longitudinal axis or the X axis or the local X axis. And depending upon the change in the direction, you can change your left hand orientation and you can find the local axis. So with this much theory, let's get into Start Pro and try finding it out 
out there. So I'm inside a new file in Stat Pro. Let's create a member. However, when creating a member, remember how you are creating the member. Now I've talked about the various ways of creating member. In this simple case, I'll be using the snap node beam, but always remember where you're starting and the ending of your beam is or your member is. For example, in this case, I'm starting my member from zero and let's go till four. Let's hit out of it. So this member has a starting at zero or this zero node is going to be its start and it's going to end here. If you don't know how your member is oriented, simply hover your mouse over the member and you'll see the color of the beam divided into three parts, the green, the red and the blue. The green is going to be your starting point and the blue will be your ending point. Let me close this snap node beam for a second and let me go to the front view that is view from the positive Z direction. So now I'm viewing my structure from the front side. Now by our theory, we know that if a member has a starting and the ending point, the longitudinal axis will be the local X axis. In our case, we know that our member is starting from the bottom and going to the top. So the local X axis is going to be along the Y axis. Now let me right click and go to the labels to see how everything is oriented. In order to see the local axis orientation, all you can do is simply go to where it says beams, go to where it says beam orientation. There is a short key as well, which is shift O. So I'll just check this on. And while I'm here, I'll just check on the node numbers as well, which is the short key of which is shift N. Let me click on OK. Let me go to the isometric view once more and let me switch on the snap node beam just for a moment so that we are properly oriented. Now you can see our member started from this zero. It went on to two. And if you're not sure it did happen, you can see your beam one, which is this beam has the first node as one which is this node and the second node as two. So let me close the snap node beam again. You can see the starting node is one, the ending node is two. Our X axis is oriented along the longitudinal axis, which is starting from one going to two. So here the blue one shows the X axis, the red one shows the Y axis and the green one shows the Z axis. This will be common all across. Let's make a few more beams. So I'll click the snap node beam again. Now this time I'll start from two. Let's go till six. And this time instead of going from six to three, let's change the orientation and go from top to bottom. So let's close the snap node beam for now. As you can see, the X axis is very simple to understand. In this case, we, are move, we have moved from two to three. So the X axis is oriented along this direction. And from three to four, we move from top to bottom. As you can see, the green portion is at the top and the blue portion is at the bottom and hence the X axis is pointing downwards. So this is very simple. X axis is very simple. Now let's move on to the concept of Z axis. So here we talked about Z axis. That is whenever your member is oriented in a vertical direction, that is its longitudinal axis is along the global Y axis. The Z is parallel to the Z of the global. That is the Z local is parallel to the Z global. And that is what is happening here. As you can see, these are the two vertical members. The X axis is along the global Y axis and the local X axis is along the global Y axis here as well, although in the negative direction. But in both the cases, you can see that the Z axis is pointed towards the actual Z axis or the global Z axis. So for all the vertical members, that is this member and this member, you can see that the local Z axis is parallel to the global Z axis. Let's create a few more beams. For that, I'll just select everything. Go to translational repeat. Now I have talked about translational repeat. You can check out my earlier video. In this case, let's select eight and I'll be translating it along the Z direction and I'll be linking the steps and I'll keeping the base as open. Let me click on OK. Now we have our structure ready. Now for all the horizontal members, that is this member, this member, this and this, these are the, all the horizontal members that is in the X Z plane. You can easily see that as per our theory for all the horizontal members, the local Y axis was parallel to the global Y axis. So for all the horizontal members, the local and the global Y axis were the same. And that is exactly what is happening here. If you can see this member, the red, which is the y, local Y axis is pointed upwards. Again here, the local Y axis is pointed upwards. Again here, the local Y axis is pointed upwards and the same thing here. So all these four members, which are horizontal, have their local Y axis along the global Y axis. And for all the vertical members, the local Z axis, that is the green axis, is along the global Z axis. And for every member, the longitudinal axis is the X axis. For example, this beam is starting from one to two. The X axis is upwards, 
on this case it's downwards in this case it's on the right and so on and so forth so this was very easy to understand let's do two more things to make this concept concrete so let's go to general let's go to the property tab we'll define a new property we'll create a rectangular property now here as you can see the yd and the ZD talk about not the global axis, but the local axis of the structure. So in our example, let's do a YD value of 0.6 and a ZD value of 0.3. Let's click on add. Let's click on close. Now what I'll do is simply select this and assign it to the entire view. So I'll click on assign and I'll click on yes. So this has been assigned to the entire view. Now to see what has happened exactly, let's right click and go to the 3D rendering. Now if I go to the 3D rendering, it's very easy to see that these horizontal members have a depth, which is the Y, the width, which is the Z. And that is exactly what is happening here. As you can see, the Y is the vertical direction and hence the depth is shown as Y and Z is the width that is along the horizontal direction which is given as the width. However, when it comes to the vertical members, so on the horizontal member, the Z axis was the width. However, in this case, the Y axis becomes the orientation. And this is very much visible in the 3D rendering as well. Right click again, go to 3D rendering. And now you can see for this member, the width or the 0.6 value is along this direction. However, for the beams, it is along the depth direction. So now the things are very clear, but let's take it one step further and talk about beta angles just for a minute. So let's focus on just this beam or just this member. Now what we'll try to do is change the orientation of this beam and that is done by beta angle. So I'll just click on beta angle and I'll create a new beta angle and I'll give a angle in degrees as 90 degrees. Now we have created this property, but we have to assign it to whatever member we want. What this does is rotates the beam or the member along the local X axis. So the X axis will remain the same and the Y and the Z axis will be rotated. So let's select this, use cursor to assign, click on assign and let's click on this. As soon as I click on this, just focus on what happens to this, the local Y axis and the local Z axis. So let's click on it. And as you can see, this entire X and Z axis has been rotated by a 90 degree. So whenever I'm going to select any member with the beta angle property, it will never change the X axis orientation, but only the local Y and Z axis orientations. So let's select this member for now. Let me zoom in for a second and let's assign the beta angle property to this one. Again, keep your focus on the local Y axis and the local Z axis. So as soon as I click on this, you'll see the local X axis and the Z axis rotate. And that is exactly what happens. So now you know how to use the beta angle as well as the local X and Z axis. Let's take it one step further and talk about loads quickly. Let's click on loads. I'll create a new load case quickly. I have talked about loads. You can check out my previous videos again. I'll click on add. I'll just leave the title for now. Go to the load case, click on add, go to the member load and go to a concentrated force. So I'll create a concentrated force and let's give it a value of five kilonewton or rather minus five kilonewton. The D1 values, I'll give it one meter and the D2, I'll let it be zero. I'll leave the direction to be the global Y direction for now and click on add and click on close. Now, if I select this, use my cursor to assign and assign, what do you think will happen? Now this is a minus five kilonewton load along the global Y axis. So it is going to be pointing downwards and it will be starting or located at one meter from the starting of any node. So let's see what may happen. Now, if we select, for example, this beam, you can see this beam is starting from two to three. If I hover over it, you can see the green portion is at the left and the blue portion is on the right. So if I'm going to apply that load here, the load will be applied at one meter from this end. Now this length is six meters, so it will be applied somewhere around here and it will be in the global Y direction or in the negative global Y direction. So let's do that. Let's go to our load case, use cursor to assign, click on assign and let's click on this beam and you can see what happens. If you're doing the same case here, again, this is the starting point because the X is pointing this side. This is going to happen again in this beam. However, you can see the local Y axis is different, but the global Y axis remains the same. So there will be no changes and the force will be in the downward direction. Let's right click quickly, go to labels, go to scales and just reduce this point force 
load so that it's easier to see i'll just click on apply click on okay now it's much easier to process so this is the case of the global y axis let's talk about the local y axis and see how it's different so i'll so let's go to load case 1 click on add go to member load again go to concentrated force again this time i'll put in a value of minus 15 and the d1 value of instead of 1 i'll put it at 1.5 just to be sure as to what is going on. The D2, I can leave it as zero or I can just let it be. In this case, instead of the global Y, I'll be using the local Y. So let's click on that, click on add, click on close. If I select this, use the cursor to assign and assign it out here on any of the horizontal members. What do you think will happen? All the horizontal members have the Y direction in parallel to the global Y direction. So all these, this member, this member, this and this, have the local y-axis and the global y-axis parallel. So if I apply this on this beam, it since this is starting from the left to the right, it will be placed just next to it. So I'll just click on assign, click it here, and you can see the load being placed here. This is what will happen in this case. However, when it comes to this beam in particular, we change its beta angle. So now the y-axis is no more pointed upwards, but pointed in this direction. So if I try to put this negative local y direction concentrated force it is going to be along the negative local y axis however the starting point of this beam as you can see is on the left and hence it will be placed at a 0.5 from this value but it will be placed in a horizontal direction so if i click on this click on assign and click on this beam you see what i mean by that this is the same thing what will happen on this beam because the y axis is in this direction so this local y-axis concentrated force will be on this direction so if i just click on this beam this is what happens again this is because we had changed the beta angle of this member as well in this case as you can see the local y-axis is along this direction if i click on it this is the direction the local y-axis places it so i hope the things are clear there are also going to be cases where you'll be talking about beta angles and having an understanding of the local axis is essential when it comes to beta angles and applying loads at a local level. Now this was a lengthy video, but I tried to cover all the bases and I hope I have made things clear. All in all, the X axis will always be along the longitudinal direction. The Z axis will be parallel to the global Z axis. That is the local Z axis and the global Z axis would be parallel in case you have a vertical member that is the longitudinal direction or the local x axis is along the global y axis. And finally, if you have a horizontal member that is a member in the xz plane, the y axis or the local y axis will be parallel to the global y axis. So just remember these three tips and remember the left hand rule. With these three basic concepts and the left hand rule, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to assess the local axis of any of the members you're looking at in stad so that is all for this video if you like this video do not forget to hit that like button and please share this video and the channel along with your friends to help support and grow this channel also if you're not already a member of the private facebook group there is a link in the description go to that link join the group thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one